Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. LSU right now, in terms of the numbers on its roster, they're a little bit over. You're, you're pushing 90 scholarship players, which is okay. You don't have to be compliant with the 85 until you report to fall camp in August. So you can go through the spring with a bloated roster if you want. Um, so it's tough for LSU to be too aggressive in the transfer portal because you're going to have to have some attrition, but there are a couple of positions where LSU, I believe would take players if the right player arose. Those are of course, as you're well aware at this point, cornerback and defensive line, specifically defensive tackle. And there have been some names that have popped up that would make some sense for LSU in the last week, and there have been some developments today with those names. The first is DeAndre Robinson, who signed with Texas and then entered the transfer portal. Um, Bo Davis recruited him there to Texas. He's an interior defensive lineman, a four-star prospect. And he thought, well, maybe he follows his defensive line coach one state over to LSU. That would be really, really good. That is a spot where LSU needs bodies. Well, today... DeAndre Robinson announced he's committed to Florida. So that ship has sailed. The other name that I think is very interesting and that I do know that LSU has interest in is Jameer Grimsley. Jameer Grimsley, four-star cornerback, top 150 player in the country, top 15 cornerback in the country, who early enrolled at Alabama before playoff practices. Well, we are well aware that things have changed in Tuscaloosa over the last week and a half. And the players at Alabama are eligible to transfer. Jameer Grimsley said, hey, I'm looking to get out. So he's entered his name into the transfer portal. This would be his one-time transfer, even though he just started school. It appears that Grimsley is between LSU and Florida. We're talking about a, a, a tall uh, 6'3"-ish cornerback. That LSU, you know, that they need, in my opinion, a little bit of talent upgrade there. You've got numbers, but it may not be the numbers you're looking for. And Jameer Grimsley makes a ton of sense. LSU is working that situation, trying to get him on a visit to Baton Rouge to lock him in. It looks like, based on some projections on On3 and 24-7 and all the, 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 the folks that are in the projections business, that Florida is the leader at this point. But Corey Raymond was there. He's not there anymore. He's at LSU now. Is there a relationship there that might be able to create something late in the process? We'll see. It feels like LSU is going to add a potential starter, a defensive tackle or corner, either in this period, which is seemingly less and less likely, or maybe in the spring period after spring practice concludes when you've got that other transfer. It's a dicey way to go about business, but it's just, I don't believe that LSU is, is comfortable with the defensive personnel on the roster right this second. That's my gut instinct based on the performance we saw all year, what we know about how, where the roster is, and then the turnover in the coaching staff. So yeah, it would have been awesome for DeAndre Robinson to jump in a defensive tackle. They're still going to work and try to get Jameer Grimsley, but the smoke is that there's some full court pressure being put on in Gainesville, and, and we'll just have to see. LSU's obviously had a ton of success in terms of numbers with getting folks to come in from the state of Louisiana, whether it was a couple years ago with Makai Garner and Jart Bernard Converse, obviously Greg Brooks, obviously... Joe Fouché, Major Burns, all those guys, Louisiana guys, left or didn't go to LSU, ended up coming back. Same thing with Zy Alexander, who was a Louisiana guy at Southeastern. Like that's a lot of your makeup was was that, and that doesn't appear to be as plentiful this go round. Some of those were hits early, some of them were not late. But it just it feels like they've got to try to find 
someone somewhere. It's not a situation where you can just open the gates and let everybody in like it was when Brian Kelly got here. You got 38 guys on scholarship? Yeah, we'll take anybody that can put on a, a, a shoulder pads. Now you're at capacity, which is good. In, in an era of mass attrition all over the place, and unless you had some attrition this year, you've got, you've got your numbers where they need to be. Question is, can you cherry pick a guy here or there that can come in and be an immediate impact guy? That just remains to be seen. But right now, unfortunately, it, it's the lead of the show, and you're looking for some good news in your transfer portal, and you can't, can't unless you get this guy on a visit. It doesn't appear that this is gonna 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 hit, but they're still working it. They're still trying, and they're gonna continue that uh, until those those windows close. Again, I don't know what happens in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I just know what's going on in Tuscaloosa right now, and they have had in excess of 30 transfers out of that program. It's a a seismic shift in the Southeastern Conference from the team that sat atop this thing and basically just kind of did what it wanted with personnel, retained everything, cherry-picked five-star, all-conference, all-American type guys. Now it's just a land rush out of there. It hasn't benefited LSU yet, but it's still early. We'll see. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your Fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.